Hello and welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I am Stevie B. It's about time we can get this show on the road, guys. Welcome to all the Stevies. I've been having problems with my microphone this morning. Did about 86 different test runs before I finally started shooting. So I know I promised you guys as my real life uh, requirements slowed down, I would start pumping out some more vids. Today I wanted to make one all about space. You guys see me in space on the Cronin regularly. So I wanted to give all the players out there as much information as I could strictly about space. First of all guys, if you're going to go into space, you need a vehicle capable of going into space. So if we hop on auction here on Cali, we can go down to vehicles and we can see right away there's a vehicle called a sleep. This little guy right here, this is the one that allows you to kind of slow boat through space. And then the slightly faster one is known as the quad wing interceptor. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with this also. Little jet looking thing. So these are not warp capable ships. I repeat, these are not warp capable ships. Um, these are the ships that everyday players can buy for a couple of bucks that will allow you to travel through space from planet to planet. When you start talking about warp capable ships, you're talking about a substantial investment in the 50,000 to 150,000, maybe even 200,000 ped range. You're just not going to get a warp capable ship much cheaper than that. So in order to go into space, you guys will need to have a couple things with you. First of all, be sure you don't have any lootables. Even though space piracy is at an all time low, you don't want to have any lootables on you. So I always do a check. I go through, I always just scroll through all my different windows just to be sure. Um, I am here for a reason. That's not what I was here for. Okay. Um, so I scroll through all my windows to be sure. I especially go through my mining tab and my looted resources tab to be sure I don't have stackables because I don't want to take anything into space that I can lose if a pirate should find me. So what I also make sure I have is welding wire. I want to have a nice little stack of welding wire on me. And I also take some RK5s or RK20 repair tools just in case I get shot down. So in addition to having your vehicle, I've got a quad. What you will need is a space thruster. You can buy these on auction. They're pretty cheap. TT values 5 ped. They go for 7, 7.5, seven 8 ped on auction. So not a ton of markup on them. Pretty affordable. The thruster is what actually lets you get through the atmosphere going up into space and then coming down landing on planet. So you will need this. You'll need to attach it to your ship. It does decay uh, 10 peck every time you use it. 10 peck every time you go through the atmosphere or every time you land somewhere so you will definitely need that uh, you can also get weapons if you're wanting to shoot at pirates or if you're wanting to do pirating i do not uh, recommend either mainly because if you're a pirate you're a dickwad and mainly if you're shooting at pirates you're just wasting money just let them kill you get those repair skills with the rk5 and rk20 repair tools and just keep on going about your day like i said piracy is kind of at an all-time low at the moment mainly due to the fact that they've done some changes in space there's just not as many lootable pvp areas in space so therefore it's kind of a giant waste of pirates time 99.9% .9 of the time. In fact, I fly fully loaded quite often and I don't see them hardly ever anymore. I uh, used to see them all the time. So once you're ready to go guys, what you'll want to do is you'll want to actually spawn your ship and once you spawn it, you'll need to have oil in your inventory and you can drag and drop the oil from your inventory to your ship. That will actually fuel your ship. As you can see, I already have fuel in mine. If we check the fuel gauge, uh, I've got 684.43 oil, which is a value of 13.68 ped. Uh, the TT value of my ship is 37.47, so I have taken damage from mobs. I have got shot at by pirates. It has done some amount of TT damage, but the structural damage is what I look at. The, st the structural integrity, uh, 1,084 over 1,200. That means I could actually spawn the ship pull out my repair tool and I could get jamming actually repairing the ship a little bit before I went out which is usually a good idea. So that's kind of the basics of getting ready to go into space but one thing you guys really need to look at if you're going to be doing any amount of traveling in space is the actual space map.
and I have a really good resource I'm going to give you guys here in just a second. So we're all familiar with the actual map of Calypso. There it is right there. See this little drop down up here in the top? This little drop down, no matter what planet you're on, you can access space from it. So let's go to an overview of space. So you will see that I am over here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. We're over here at Calypso. This is Calypso right here. If you see to the left, kind of upper left of Calypso, it looks like there's a moon. That's not a moon. That's just a decoration. The very first time I ever tried to go to Monria, I thought that was Monria. And I spent about an hour trying to fly to that thing. And it's just decoration. You can't actually get there. So space is weird because of the way it's built. You can actually hit what's called deep space. So see all the black around the space map? That's deep space. Essentially, you hit the border. You can hit the border side to side. You can hit the border top to bottom. It's a cube. And it's kind of a weird deal. So that being said, let's talk about where everything is in space. I'm going to zoom in just a hair. Like I said, here is Calypso. And if you notice, just to the right of Calypso, there's a space station. That's Calypso Space Station. If I go out just a little bit more, just to the right of the space station, and then below it just a hair, that is, uh, I believe, FOMA. And if we go just to the right of the space station and up, that little purple-looking thing, that's Crystal Palace. Or I might have that backwards, but I, I believe that's right. I believe the bottom one's FOMA, top one's Crystal Palace. Could be the other way around. So they're pretty close to Cali SS. Only takes a few seconds to get there from the space station, and the space station only takes about 30 seconds to get to from Cali. So that being said, guys, if we go down, if I just go straight down, the planet down here in the bottom left-hand corner, that's going to be Sirene, with Sirene Space Station right above it. Notice there's these blue dots here. Anytime you see these blue dots, that usually means you can find space mobs there. So the Sirene Training Grounds, there's going to be space mobs there. Uh, Skyflow Nesting Grounds by Sirene, there's going to be Skyflow there. There are space mobs. You can shoot them. You can loot them. Uh, shooting them and looting them does take a little bit of skill or an auto-loot pill because of how you have to be in proximity to them. It's a little bit different. One of the reasons I do not like hunting space mobs is A, the loot they drop, B, it's usually in or near a PvP lootable zone, but the big one is just the guns that you have to use on your ship have like a 50-55% efficiency rating, and I'm all about efficiency. I love high efficiency, and if I can't use a high efficiency weapon, I would rather just not hunt at all, therefore I don't really hunt space mobs. Uh, these are the same mobs that if you're on the Cronin and you're skilling repair skills and you're piloting, the pilot will be taking damage from those mobs on Cronin because Cronin's a mothership. It's truly unlimited. It does not have TT value that deteriorate deteriorates like a quad or a sleep would. If you tried to go out and uh, skill crafting skills through repairing and taking damage on a sleep or a quad, it would be a very, very, very expensive way to skill for sure because you would lose a ton of TT value. Let's get some sips and some smacks for the haters out there. I got our haterade handy. We do not smoke anymore. Going on almost a week and a half, smoke free. So we got plenty of sips and smacks for the haters out there. Hope the haters are watching as well as the Stevies out there. Gotta love all the Stevies, but gotta love the haters too. So, yep, there's a smack. If we go to the right, at the bottom in the middle, this is going to be Planet Arcadia. Planet Arcadia is going to be bottom center of your map. And notice we've got three areas around Arcadia. We got the Hermit Nesting Grounds, we got the Skyflow Nesting Grounds, and we've got Arcadia Training Grounds. That's where you can find the uh, Cosmic Cores. Over here, in between Cyrene and Arcadia, we've got Gordon's Belt. This is an area where there will probably be some mobs also. Up here, above it, is Graveyard Fields. This is, uh, see this little H on my screen? That's actually the Cronin, right there. And it is currently parked at Urbos SS, which is literally right next to Graveyard Fields. There are some areas in the middle of the map that I have not filled in yet. Um, there are some other space stations. I think Z Space Station Zeus is between the Cyrene Training Grounds and Gordon's Belt. It's south of Urbos. I believe it's in between these two. And then if we keep going to the right, 
in the bottom right we're going to have planet Taloon and there's going to be some areas over here with mobs if we go or wait is that Taloon or is that Taloon no 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 I'm sorry bottom middle right ish is going to be uh, next island that's next island guys I'm sorry then Taloon is above that notice I haven't ever been to Taloon like not even once and then if we go back to the right in the top center we're going to have Rocktropia and then between Rocktropia and Cyrene kind of in the top leftish of the map I've got this blue dot and then I've got this space station which is dead center of my map at the moment if I zoom in see this little blob just to the left of the space station here that is going to be Monria so if you're looking at the map and you're going counterclockwise starting at Rocktropia going the reverse of a clock it's Rocktropia and then you've got Monria Calypso Cyrene Arcadia Next Island Taloon back to Rocktropia so that's kind of the space map uh, in a gist now in the middle of the space map this big area in the middle the big blank space in the middle of the map right smack dab where Cronin is right now that is going to be your PvP lootable zone now there are other PvP lootable zones in space so the big question I get from a lot of people is how do I know where is PvP where is not PvP stuff like that how do I know where the space stations are so I'm going to give you guys a great resource right now I went ahead and I pulled it up prior to starting today's video this is one of the most valuable resources you guys can have in game I'm going to put it right here on the center of the screen for you all to see http colon slash slash www.entropia-library dot xyz slash space dash map forward slash um, so this is a great interactive space map that was built by an entropian I use it all the time in space definitely go to that website address and check it out because what I love about this map and you guys will see this when you start using it is this map has every single thing you could ever want it shows you where all the space stations are they're all the little yellow dots, uh, Howling Mine, Taloon Space Station, Rocktropia, Erbos, uh, Space Station Athena, Hermes Space Station, which I've never even been to, Arcadia, Zeus, uh, Zeus is right, right by Gordon's Belt. Um, it also shows you where all of the different uh, space mob areas are, those blue circles and the blue squares. Uh, there's one here, Welkmire Expanse, never been there. Void of Tears, never been there. Graveyard Fields I've been to, so Void of Tears is right next to Graveyard Fields. Some of these I've never even been to, guys. Uh, Rackham's Nest, never been there. But on the right side of the map, it says Map Details, there's Deep Space, Landing Zones, Lootable PvP, and Server Borders. If you check those, the map changes. So if I check Deep Space, then it shows me where deep space is, all the purple area. If I hit landing zones, it shows me where the various landing zones are around the planets. If I choose lootable PvP, it shows me where all the lootable PvP areas are. If I hit server borders, it shows me where the server borders are. Whenever you know where the server borders are, it's possible to jump around in space. So like if I was going to Calypso uh, to graveyard fields via Urbos if I could get just past the server border into the server where Urbos is then I could jump out of my quad suffocate and revive at Urbos and save a lot of fuel and time so server hopping is very very helpful and knowing where those server borders are allow you to do that also there's creature locations if I want to know just where Skyflow is I click it and it shows me where Skyflow is if I want to know where Hermit is Cosmic Horror same thing drop ships if I click it shows me where dropships are. Dropships are not going to be in one of those blue circles. They're in a hidden area that you can't see unless you know where it is. And the, this map will show you. Uh, Daimlek, same thing. It's in a hidden area. If you click Daimlek, it shows you the one place on the space map you can find it. Locusta, Locusta. Um, I'm clicking it. Nothing's happening. 
I'm sure there's a reason for that. Now there's a funny thing. If you click warp gates, it says ha 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 funny. That's because there are warp gates. And the reason we don't want people knowing where the warp gates are is if you're a captain or if you fly a warp capable ship, you don't want people knowing where to put warp mines. There is an actual tool called a warp mine that you can place at a warp gate that will help uh, damage a mothership or a warp capable ship should it come through that. It's made and almost exclusively used for and by pirates. So that's why we don't list the warp gates on there. But we do have waypoints. Uh, you can go to the bottom of the page and you can find waypoints for literally everything in space. All the space stations, all the training grounds, everything. And the reason this is helpful is space has an up and down. On planet, we're used to waypoints where it's an X, Y. It's just a flat map and we need to get to a point, right? But in space, we have up, down also. We've got an altitude. And a space station might be at negative 50 altitude. It might be at positive 1500 altitude. So you can literally be on the X, Y coordinate of the space station and not be able to see it because it can be, you know, a thousand meters above you or a thousand meters below you. And that's very, very annoying. And if you type in just the XY coordinate, that will happen. However, if you use these waypoints provided on the entropia-library.xyz forward slash space dash map forward slash uh, interactive map, these waypoints all have the space altitude for everything also. So by using this exact waypoint as it is on the website, it will literally create a waypoint that takes you right to where you want to go literally x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate i absolutely love it it's very helpful whenever i'm at arcadia ss and i'm trying to get to the skyflow or, or hermit nesting grounds and then back to arcadia ss um Urbos to graveyard fields and back isn't a huge deal especially once you do that run enough times you know almost exactly where Urbos ss is at all times without even needing a waypoint um, but definitely if you're at arcadia ss going out to the training grounds and back it's helpful just anytime you're going to be flying in space and you want to get to where you're going as fast as possible having that exact waypoint with the altitude as well as having those server borders super super helpful so guys, that being said, like I said, piracy is at an all-time low. Give me one second, guys. Uh, piracy is at an all-time low, so if you guys are wanting to do some exploring in space, now is definitely the time to do it, in my opinion. Uh, it's just one of those things. It could change any day. I don't see MindArk putting everything back the way it was, but you never know it is MindArk. They've been promising a lot of changes for a long time now. So that said, guys, get out there, explore space. The thruster decay is minimal. Just be sure you've got enough oil to get where you're wanting to go. Uh, be sure that you've got a thruster on you so that you don't get stuck somewhere. If you do get stuck somewhere, feel free to use the chats, uh, your society chat in particular, in order to try and get somebody to help you out. Also, be sure that you go through and make sure you don't have any lootables on you. You do not want any lootables on you when going into space because even if the chance of piracy is low, there's still a chance. And the last thing you want is to get shot down with a whole lot of very valuable stuff you can't get back. So guys, that's kind of my overall quick introduction to space, space travel, and best practices. A little bit of a secret about how to find that interactive space map that I've always found so handy. I am on Cali at the moment. I do plan to hop over to Rocktropia at some point this week. Uh, I will probably also be stopping by Arcadia. We've got Summer Mayhem and Summer Migration coming up. I'm going to try and get that mining video done today if I can get the uh, energy up to do it. I know I've been promising you guys that one for a while, but I am trying. Um, it's just a matter of keeping my energy up and real life and other commitments and stuff. Also got a lot of great stuff going on in EU. I know they recently made an announcement that uh, player-based sweepstakes and drawings are now against terms of use. I saw that one coming for a while. That should not surprise anybody. But we do have a lot more great content coming. I will leave it there for now. I hope to do more videos on space in the future. But that's the kind of checklist you guys need to go through before leaving planet to go into space number one be sure you have space downloaded be sure you have your destination downloaded as well be sure that you have a thruster and plenty of oil for your space capable vehicle 
Also be sure that you've got welding wire and at least one RK5 repair tool in case you get shot down. And guys, be sure, be sure, be sure, be sure you're not taking lootables into space. If you're going to take lootables into space, know that there is still piracy. It's just a very, very low amount of piracy. Um, another way to get some great experience in space is to become a Cronin crew member. You can go to cronin-ms.info to learn more about joining the Cronin crew. Big shout out to Granny and everybody in the Cronin. Also guys, come check out Port Atlantis. This was one of the old starting points. As you guys know, it's pretty near North Swamp Camp, which I like to hang out at. Uh, this is my favorite teleporter, but there's another one on top of Port Atlantis Mall, and there's some terminals inside this building with some auctioneers and storage and stuff for you as well. So guys, I'll leave it there for now. I've been Stevie B with EarnPed.com. We appreciate all the Stevies out there, all the supporters, and all the haters too. Stevies, if you would, do me a favor. Hit that little bell icon. Hit the little subscribe icon because every subscriber matters. Also, hit that like button because it's only because of y'all's support that we can keep making and posting these videos. The haters are going to hit the dislike button, so it's on all the Stevies to hit the like button and be sure that we keep these videos coming. That way we can share the game we love with the people that we love. Also, the University of EU Society is still welcoming anybody new or old who does not have a society home simply hit f11 search for university of eu put through an application and you will be accepted as long as you're not a hater society chat is always active with lots of people as you can see right there miss sarah watson is back with us uh we wish her well she's been recovering from some things in real life and she is finally back with us great to have her uh, we do have an official University of EU Discord Miss Sarah Watson has put together. I'll be giving the link out in society chat. If you guys want to support us, the best way to do that is to head over to earnped.com because when you earn, we earn. We appreciate it, guys. We could not do these videos without you. I hope this has helped you guys learn some things about space, given you some new resources about space, and helped you learn what you need to do to be ready to go into space for the first time. It is an interesting part of Entropia, so please feel free to check it out. It will make your Entropia experience a little bit richer. For everybody at EarnPed.com, I've been Stevie B. This has been Adjusted Pixie Puppy, currently gnawing on my wrist because she's wanting play. So we'll leave it there for today, and we'll see you all soon. Take care, Stevies.